Hi, my name is Casey Dilworth. I am a production artist here at the Chicken Farm Art Center for the Starkeeper Gallery and Roger Allen Pottery. I'm the lead production artist for Roger Allen Pottery or RA Pottery. Um, and basically that just means that I can do all the designs. I'm currently the uh, lead thrower and we have an amazing crew of individuals working to create the line of work that we have. Chandra Satterwhite and Patrick Sum are two of the other uh, artists that are working currently with us to produce this line of work. All of our art that we do um, is inspired and in a continuation of the design legacy of Roger Allen. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do a little demo for you. So, uh, so anyway, <laughs> here we go. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate today um, some of the design work that we do on something like this. So this particular piece is the um, elements um, out of the series of the Starkeeper. Um, and the Starkeeper is this figure here in the middle, but you'll notice around it, it's quadrated out into four sections. And there's these really wonderful designs and you can see the colors through it. And they've got this um, really fun kind of um, harsh black outline. Um, and then of course the really bright colors coming through. And we achieved this using a technique with wax resist um, over top of our sprayed under glazes. And we airbrush um, all of our colorants. Um, I've done a few other demos. We did a demo last year. Um, and kind of have shown that off. So um, uh, basically we get these really wonderful gradated colors um, from the airbrush and then we go over it in areas like this with uh, water-based uh, wax resist. And most people are more familiar with that using it you know, on the bottoms of your cups or your bowls or whatever if you're dipping glazes. Um, some of you may have dabbled in this. So this is just the way that we do it. Um, and you can take that home with you and explore the possibilities and the opportunities with Wax Resist. So uh, we'll take a step into the production room and I will show you the, tro the, the <laughs> we're gonna take a step into the production room here in a second and I'll show you the tools that I'll be using today. All right, so this is a production room. Of course, sneak peek behind me, all of what's in those boxes are gonna be on display at the show. Anyway, so if you wanna do wax resist um, on a piece, you're gonna to need to, of course, have your pottery. Um, my pieces currently actually are drying because I just got done spraying them, so we'll go grab those here in a second, you'll see those. But one of, of course, the main things for having using uh, wax resist is to have some wax resist. So we like to use the uh, armadillo stuff. Um, this is, of course, water-based. You can get it by the gallon over at Armadillo Clay. It is fantastic stuff, and uh, we get it by a gallon because it lasts forever um but uh yeah so we end up uh you know sieving it out a little bit and putting it in some little jars so i'll be using this in the video today um and then of course you're going to want some dedicated wax resist brushes so we take very good care of our brushes so they still seem pretty soft and malleable um but they still have a little bit of wax residue on them no matter how much they've been washed and cleaned um so definitely if you're going to use wax resist or if you already do you already know um you want to keep uh brushes that you use with your wax separate from any brushes that you might use with under glaze or any sort of um glaze application uh because it creates a little residue on the brush which will resist your <laughs> uh liquid glaze um, also what's super important, um, at least for us, is that as you're, you're basically using the wax as a paint, um, it will gunk up your brushes just a little bit. So we keep two cups of um, water. So this is just plain water. And then this one has some soap in it. I'll try to get it there. Um, so a little bit of Dawn dish soap and uh, periodically throughout um, painting with the wax resist to create the design. Um, I'll dip the brushes into the soapy water and kind of give it a nice little rough around um, and then take it out, rinse it out in that. Um, and that also just kind of helps keep those brushes clean for the next use. So um, you don't have to go and buy new brushes, you know, a couple times a year. You can, we've been using the same brushes for several, several years now. Um, and and uh, it just comes down to taking good care of your tools. So we of course have a towel here um, and the towel uh, is good to have underneath your ceramic, not only because it'll keep it in place as you go along, but if you have too much wax, you can you know, kind of wipe a little bit off on the towel or um, you know, just kind of keep your hands clean if you happen to get a little wax on your fingers so you're not spreading that around to the rest of your piece. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. So I'm gonna go grab those tiles and I will give you a so I went and got my tiles. So as you can see, I just took this one, put it under the spray and did like this kind of radiating round pattern. 
And then this one is just lateral lines. Um, so, you know, it'll come out differently. Um, I also, I forgot to mention this earlier, this is a little Lazy Susan kind of thing um, with a little bit of sponge on top and I'm gonna keep this underneath um, these as I work on them. Um, and that's just gonna make it so it's easier for me to rotate it without having to lift it up and move it around all the time. So yeah, so to make this, you just went over to a few little things. So I gotta let this dry, and then once this dries, I'll take it over to the spray booth and we'll spray the whole thing with black. If you don't have a spray booth, you can also just paint over it with whatever color underglaze uh, you'd like to, you know, um, cover it with. And basically what I've done is all these areas that are covered with wax, it's gonna preserve that color underneath. So all of these areas are gonna show through after the wax burns out. So uh, basically as you do this, um, it's like thinking in reverse. So all the areas that I want to say colorful, I've got to cover in wax. So um, you kind of have to work um, yeah, backwards, <laughs> basically is the best way I can explain it. So yeah, there it is. So here's a little bonus content for you. Super expensive, super fancy tool. You know that pencil you have running around in your studio that's basically worn down to nothing almost, just real tiny little thing? Well, if it still has at least a little bit of a nub of an eraser, you can create the most amazing tool ever with just this and a paper clip. Take that paper clip, shove the end of it into that uh, eraser, and just snip it off, and voila! perfectly sharp little needle tool. Um, this is really great because you have a lot of control over it um, instead of having that big long needle tool, which is wonderful for certain applications. But for us, this is really great to get those nice little carving lines and to have a lot of detailed control uh, over it. And um, yeah, trade secret over here. So uh, take, take this home with you and try this out. I guarantee you it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, it also helps if the, the pencil is a little bit old, uh, that eraser kind of a little bit hard, kind of really helps that stick. If not, pop a little super glue in there, it'll stay right there. But uh, point of fact is, so the other one is drying. So this one I wanted to do a little bit more illustrative work on. So these are already pre-fired tiles. We normally work on greenware, but that doesn't mean that you can't apply underglaze and scratch through it to still reveal the clay body beneath. And this of course will be a white tile. So I want this to be a star keeper. I'm gonna time lapse the next part, but basically let me give you a little explanation. I'm gonna scratch through this underglaze to bring out some white details um, in this and kind of give it um, that kind of illustration effect. And I'm gonna use those white areas like I would a pencil line. So this is just pencil that's kind of sketched out here where Star Keeper is going to be, kind of where the landscape is going to be. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and scrape off that underglaze um, and reveal the white outline. Um, and then I'll go back in later and do wax resist. Um, and it'll kind of give this really wonderful depth to the piece. Um, so again, you can get as detailed with this as you want, or you can get it, be as simple as you want with it. Use it to just create a basic pattern or design or create a whole illustration with using this wax resist technique.
All right, so once you end up finishing spraying and they're dry, you can, uh, the way we do it usually, because we usually have both these kilns or all three sometimes running, um, is you put it on top of the kiln that's starting to fire. So you don't want the top to be too hot. You want to still be able to touch it. If this is too hot already, by the time you're ready to use it, it's no good. You're going to mess up the pottery. Um, so you just take some tin foil and we recycle and we use ours a lot. And you're just going to gently tent it over top. You don't really want to push it down on the pieces. And you're just going to weigh down the sides. We just use some kiln stilts just to keep it from blowing off. And so those pieces are in the middle here. You can see it's kind of still lifted up a little bit. And this on the sides, there's a little bit of a gap on each side to let the air escape. Um, so this sits on top as the kiln's firing. And what that does is that burns off the wax. Recording the intro to green based on and inspired by uh, the <laughs> my head's still chopped off if I sit here like this. Let's see. Two, now that my head's not chopped off. Oh, mosquito. Nest bugs. Yeah, if you see any mosquitoes flying around. Did I get it? Oh, I got two of them. Oh.